Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I have another Diwali recipe for you all and this one is for a spiced kurma. This is going to be extra spiced. So if you love like a gingerbread flavor, this is what you're going to get from this recipe. So let's jump straight into this one. I'm so excited to share it with you all. This is by far one of the best kurma recipes I've done. So in a big bowl, we're going to add two cups of all-purpose flour and you want to pack the flour in the cup and these are the spices that i'm going to be using so i'm going to be using what i use i'll list it in the description box for you all so ginger all of those yummy delicious spices that you'll find in a gingerbread and feel free if i missed any spices like i did not put any cardamom in here but if you wanted to you can i just decided i wanted to go the route without the cardamom Give that a mix and then I decided I think I need some fresh nutmeg in here so I'm just gonna grate in some fresh nutmeg. I love the taste of fresh nutmeg versus the one that is already grated. Now just mix that in and then I'm gonna add in my ginger. I wanted to put some fresh ginger in here to just to bring out the flavor in that kurma molasses which is so important and i'm using butter i'm using unsalted butter anytime you're making anything for diwali it has to be unsalted and two tablespoons of condensed milk if you wanted to omit the condensed milk you can especially if you're diabetic and now we're going to mix everything together until it comes together and looks like fine breadcrumbs and then you'll start adding water. I prefer using water. If you wanted to use some milk, you can. You're going to add the water a little at a time and mix and bring it together. It's going to be like a shaggy dough at first. You don't want your dough to get overly soft. So a little bit at a time. You see how I'm putting it in a little bit at a time? That's how you want to do it. Because if you over put water, it's going to get your dough really, really soft. Now you can see how stiff my dough is, but I'm bringing all of that together to form it into one dough ball by squeezing it. I promise you it's going to make for the best kurma in the world. So once it comes together, you don't have to knead it for the gluten to form. This is perfect as is. We're just going to place this on a floured surface and it's time to roll it out to about a quarter of an inch in thickness. It's really, really firm as you can see. So go ahead and roll this out. What? You say I eat out something. Now when I roll it out, I don't like the cracked edges. So I'll show you a trick that I do. I take my pizza cutter and I just trim off the edges ever so slightly. Because I like to see it nice and clean. So when I cut my kerm, I have nice straight edges. And you can cut these as thin or as thick as you like. I prefer to go a little bit on the thinner side. And I'm going to cut this into four pieces. So not too long and not overly short. And all those small little little pieces, I bring it back together into a bowl and make some more kurma. Test your oil. You want your oil to be on a medium low. You don't want it to be screaming hot. So you can tell that it's frying but it's not burning as soon as you put it into the oil and that's how you'll know it's at the perfect temperature. On my stove, I fry this at a 5 because I fry on an electric stove. These are going to fry up for about 15 to 20 minutes. These took a little longer than my regular kurma, but just let it fry until it's really golden and crisp. It does get a little darker because of the molasses that I put in there. So you want to take it out and drain it, place it on some paper towels. And then we'll just set these aside to cool down ever so slightly. 
and I like putting it in a plastic bowl because when you mix your sugar syrup, that sugar syrup is not going to stick to the bowl like a metal bowl. To a saucepan, add in one cup of sugar with half a cup of water. If you wanted to make half this amount of coating, you can split the recipe in half. It's going to look really, really cloudy at first. Mix, 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 and then it will start to get clearer. When you're making your sugar syrup, when you rub your spoon on the out on that inner edge of the pot, you'll notice little white crystals forming. It will look like if it's snow. And from the time you see that, that's your indication that your sugar syrup is ready. So you'll see fine, fine bubbles like you're seeing here. And then you'll start to see the sugar starting to crystallize on the inside of the pot. Take it on immediately and pour it all over your kerma. If that crystal does not form on the inside of the pot, your sugar syrup is not ready. And if you let it cook too long and it starts to crystallize really hard, your sugar syrup is not going to coat your kerma in this way. I'm going to show you. This is how I like my kerma coated. You're going to mix, 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 and I'm not cutting the footage here. I'm going to show you how fast you can go from adding in that sugar syrup. So when you mix, 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 and it cools and it coats your kerma. Mix, mix, mix. You see how it's coming in. That's what you want. And as I said, using a plastic bowl helps to clean up because the sugar actually breaks away from the plastic easily when it's time to wash up the dishes. And this is done. So this is what it would look like when it's totally dried. Look how perfect that sugar coats that kerma. And this is how I like my kerma. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. Try this recipe. Let me know what you think. I really, really love it. Everyone that tasted it loved it. Here the crunch. It's so amazing. And I can't wait for you all to try it. Be sure, please, tag me on Instagram so I can see all of the lovely recipes you all make this Diwali. And if you're having any issues in the kitchen, feel free to send me an email.